Hello again, everybody. It is your boy BQ. Welcome to the Negative BQ YouTube channel. This is your Impact Lounge Impact Wrestling Review for 10-31-2024. This is the Halloween episode. I thought that it was an okay episode. I didn't hate it. I didn't think it was good necessarily. It was just kind of there. But I do want to commend them because in the past, this would have been some throwaway bullshit episode. I think they did last year after Bound for Glory, as a matter of fact. I, I could be wrong on that, but I know last year had a lot of filler programming to end the year and clearly they're not doing that this year but i do give them um i do give them props for having an actual fallout episode even though it was holiday themed they did not you know we didn't get a nightmare on elm street fight with you know tommy dreamer and rhino you know what i'm saying so um i i, I really commend them for doing that but that being said it was it, it was an okay episode it was just it was just kind of there but you know, at least they started kind of getting the ball rolling for the storylines that are we're going to, you know, see throughout the the rest of the year. So um, it actually kicked off. And um, you guys, unless you're living under a rock, you know about the Chris Bay injury. I'm terribly sorry. I don't know why I can't stop saying black, the word black. And he suffered a very unfortunate neck injury. I believe he broke his neck. And there's been a GoFundMe uh, going around. I think it's at like 60000 maybe, something like that right now. I know there's a Pro Wrestling Tees campaign going on. Uh, I would even I would even implore you guys, something that would make him really happy is to uh, to, to stream his music. You know, uh, I, I do listen to his music. My son listens to it. Uh, there's quite a, quite a few songs that we really enjoy. And even though streaming money is not great, you know what I mean? Like... If you can't give, listen to his music. Why not? It might be, you know, peanuts here and there, but it all all add up. So that just for me to you, just uh, just an idea for you guys. Uh, if you feel like that, you are unable to give. But this was very classy on TNA's part. I was happy to see them do this. I mean, last time there was a main, major injury on the show. The last one I can remember was Sammy Callahan like breaking his ankle and all they did was show the injury and play we own the night. You know, so this is a far cry from from those days and I think they've kind of set the standard on how they should handle injuries going forward. Obviously if someone gets injured on the indies or something that's different, but when you're uh working under the TNA banner, you're doing uh you're on the roster, you're, you're filming television, there's a ma major injury. Hopefully they set the standard for how they're going to, to handle that going forward. So we wish, we, wish, um, we wish the best to Chris Bay. And hopefully he's able to come back from this. And, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I, I don't know, I, I can't think of any wrestlers off the top of my head with similar injuries in the past, especially because I didn't see it. So I don't even know, you know, I don't know a whole lot about the severity of it. Maybe a lot of you guys actually probably know a lot more, but we do wish him the best and, and hope that he's able to come back. WWE had a couple releases recently, and I'm going to go through this real quick because people always hit me with this stuff. So I might as well address it. Baron Corbin, no. Now, I liked Baron Corbin's NXT work once upon a time, but this is not someone who came up through the indies. This is not someone who paid his dues. This is not someone that's wrestled at the bingo halls and worked for his indie rate. This guy's not coming to TNA. I don't even, I don't even know that he wrestles again. I mean, <laughs> there's really no point at this point in his career and at his age. So I, I can see him doing... Um, conventions and doing probably pretty well at those but i'm sure he has other ventures that he would be interested in uh bringing him in would be like bringing in kevin nash 12 13 years ago you know what i'm saying someone just come in probably not give a shit uh tna gonna put him over their talent i just it i don't really want to see it and i don't have anything against the dude i mean from when i watched wwe i like you know but i i, I wouldn't bring him in Indy Hartwell, no, she's not good. 
I can see them bringing her in, but yeah, I would just honestly with the knockouts, like I want to see them scout the Indies because there's some there's some really talented girls out there. I, I would rather them scout the Indies and like really bring in fresh talent. I just don't want WWE people coming on. I, I just don't. Um, and then Tegan Knox was the other. I think I re- I seen her wrestle in the Indies like back in the day. I, I might have her confused with someone else. I remember her being pretty good, having some injury history. So if she can go, then that could be someone they can look at. Absolutely. Um, if there is, you know, too much of an injury history, I don't know that AEW would touch her because they already have a very dangerous style of wrestling over there. But that's all I'm going to say about those three. They would not move the needle or help TNA in any way whatsoever. And I, I wouldn't, I'm, I'm not for signing people just to sign them because they wrestled in WWE. So let's get into this episode. It kicks off with PCO wishing us a happy Halloween. And then immediately we get Joe Hendry's music. Now I'm going to rewind here a little bit. When the episode started, they're playing the Bound for Glory slow motion clips, the song PCO. It took us almost five minutes until Joe Hendry's music hit. Obviously, it wasn't him. But four minutes and 50 seconds. I had to check the timer on this. That is entirely too long to start your episode. This is why people DVR the show. This is why you don't get that live viewership bump. Because there's when you're wasting time like that in this ADHD world, people are not sitting through that shit for five minutes before they see a reason to watch the show. But anyway, Joe Hendry's music hits. So I'm going to say the good about this real quick. I thought Frankie Kazarian, let's give him a sound drop before I talk too long. King of the block party. It's a block party. I'm not playing with y'all, bro. I thought he nailed this. This impression, impersonation of Joe Hendry was excellent. It was funny. I was into it. Frankie Kazarian is one of the few funny people on this roster. There's someone later in the show that tries to be funny who's not funny. Frankie Kazarian is, and we'll get to that part (laughs) when we get to it. Trust me. So Frankie Kazarian came out and he did the Joe Hendry impersonation. I thought, I thought it was really good. He, he truly did make me laugh. I thought this whole segment from, from like top to bottom would not end though. It went on too long. I thought I was watching Monday Night Raw. Like it just entirely too much fluff happened in this episode before we ever got any kind of match. I think that's a little bit of a problem. I don't think that's a formula that will work for TNA because people are always looking for a reason to turn TNA off. Like you kind of got to put your best foot forward. And I I don't think that that's doing it, but imitating him, call him 252 pounds of pure defecation. A question nobody asked. We believe in losing. You know, I thought I thought it was pretty good. Tom Hannafin. I'm not going to talk about Tom this episode. Tom Hannafin says this. Accent is egregious. Who talks like that? You know what he sounds like is, you know the people who get, they'll like download the word of the day or they'll get they'll buy a calendar that says what the word of the day is and they they learn the definition and they have to use it in a sentence throughout the course of the day. But they're not, they're not like common everyday words. It'll be like Afrocentricity and you, you know what I'm saying. So. That's what he sounds like. There's this, he has some word every episode that nobody talks like. And it's like he was, he's challenged himself to get it into the episode. That's all I'm going to say about Tom. So after that, Joe Hendry's music hits and the real Joe Hendry comes out. Believe that. And I forgot to say this when I was reviewing Bound for Glory. I thought Joe Hendry at Bound for Glory was entirely too silly, too jokey. Now, they did a a very long, drawn-out video package and entrance for him before the match. And if you guys remember, there was a part where, you know, just like his regular song where he shows the back of his head and he turns around. People, I was positive, positive, I would have bet my testicles, that when he turned around, he was going to be dead serious. I I was positive. I was like, this Joe character, 
which it, the joke gets over. It's not bad comedy, but it's comedy still. And we're talking about the main event for Bound for Glory. And he came out um, doing the same shtick. And there was a couple other times in the beginning of the match before it started, he turns around and he's cheesing and he's smiling. And I'm like, I, I just would have gone into this dead serious. I thought that would have really added something to a main event, which was not good at Bound for Glory. Not main, for, main, for main event, but the world title match was not good. I just feel that when it's when those kind of stakes are on the line, that I think you have to leave comedy behind. There was a NWA had a pay per view last year, the Coke one, where, where uh, Father James Mitchell was doing the Coke uh, pay per view. was called Saw Win, and Tom Latimer, formerly known as Bram, was in the main event wrestling for the world title. This motherfucker comes out cosplaying like the Macho Man, and Camille comes out cosplaying like Miss Elizabeth, Miss Elizabeth. I said in the fucking main event of your pay-per-view. And the commentary was just telling just as many jokes in the main event as they were in the, were in the beginning. And that was one thing that, you know, in the early Anthem era, when it was Josh Matthews and, and uh, Don Callis on commentary, trust me, they had some really bad humor on the episodes but they would always kick it up a notch on the pay-per-view. And by the main event of the pay-per-view, they were just so focused on the action. I just don't think there's room for, for jokes or smiling or anything like that when it's now granted, this was the semi main, not the main, but it was the world title. I just don't think there's, there's room for that. Uh, so Joe Hendry is talking. And, and again, this is just kind of going and going and going. He, he name drops Nick Nemeth. And the second, he says his name. His music hits, and it's Nick Nemeth. I've been talking to people walking here. We've been talking about next year, and I'm sitting there saying, I'm not going to be here. <laughs> and then he comes out, cut that, cut that, cut the music. If you didn't want the music to play, you should have just walked out there because obviously you have to stand there in gorilla for a second, say, cue up my music, and then step out, and then you tell them to turn off the music. And they're bringing up John Layfield, which. I mean, nobody cares about, no one cares about Johnny, John Layfield. But he brings him up and said, I didn't know that he hit you. I didn't know he hit this guy. I just saw him hit my brother. And you deserve a rematch. So they're going to, that's how they're going to get there creatively. <laughs> you, de you deserve it. So he's going to get a rematch. He said Sant he wanted to do it tonight, but Santino said no. And He's cutting up. He's he's talking and he says the system is flawed. And the minute he says the system, the system's music plays and they come out. And it's Alicia Edwards with Do You Want to Know Something? Uh, hi, baby. And you guys know I love Alicia. And I think she's getting this heel gimmick over very well. But there's a such thing as overkill. When you have something that's working. And you're doing, do you want to know something? And you say it four times on the way out. That's you're killing it at that point. That is overkill. You know, Vicky Guerrero once a day. I mean, once upon a time, not once a day, once upon a time, Vicky Guerrero used to say, excuse me. But um, in the, in the very early stages the actually for the first couple of years, she wouldn't just come out yelling it. She would just come out regular. And the minute, People started booing to the point that she couldn't speak. Then she'd be like, "Excuse me." She, she would be, she she would react to the people. Now in AEW, she just come out, "Excuse me," whatever. But she would play off the people, and I don't believe she ever overkilled it. Like Alicia is getting there right now. Come at you say it once. It's your line. I mean, you say it as much as Tom Hannafin lets us know that the X Division is not about weight limits; it's no limits. Like it's it's a little. Uh, a little too much. So she comes out with Eddie Edwards, um, with Dango. We've got no Moose. We've got no Brian Myers. I'm, I'm assuming they were not there. And then they had Tasha Steeles as well. We've got a badass over here. And I, I, they lost me at this point. I, I can barely even recap this because it was so long. But then Alicia starts calling out Masha Slamovich, saying she's on borrowed time. And then we get Masha Slamovich. We've got a badass over here. 
That's the wrong sound drop. Masha Slamovich. Meet Fran Stalinaskovich Davidovich. And she came out and did the same thing. Masha's doing pretty good on the mic at this point. Um, considering these are really her first promos on TV. I mean, if you really think about it, even though she's been on TV for a long time, like this is her first time talking in English. When she was, you know, having a little feud with Jordan and and, jo- and she told Jordan, you were the only one who knew I spoke English, but you didn't tell anyone for selfish reasons. Like, why is that selfish, by the way? How does that make any sense? Anyway, Masha's starting to do a pretty good job here. And I think she is back to the, back to baby face and they attack her. And then Jordan Grace's music hits. I, I feel like half the roster's music hits in the fir- hit in the first 15 minutes of this show. She comes out and it's like the minute Alicia actually started talking, I knew exactly where it was going because in the segment before this, when it ended, it's Nick Nemeth who said, how about you two against, me and Joe Hendry at the end of the night. So real WWE opening segment, turn it into a tag team match. Teddy Long is rolling over in his grave with happiness if he was dead, which he is not. Um, And then they do the same thing here. Same exact thing. There's a brawl. Jordan Grace saves her. Santino Morella's music hits. Sometimes it may be good. Sometimes it may be shit. And he comes out and lets us know we're having a tag team match next week. And he... He name drops everyone in the least funniest way possible. He talked about the main event tonight was going to be, you know, he starts listing off names. He he forgot how he was going to say Eddie Edwards. He was like, Edward, Edward, Edwards. But he comes out and he's just messing up names just to do it. Like it's not, it's just very, very unfunny. So after that, after um, that whole segment, Oh, and Tom translates, by the way, or he translates. Says, if you need translation for what Santino just said, who's going to ten- translate for Tom? You can't. Anyway, no, 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 we're not going to talk about Tom. We're not going to talk about Tom, right? After that, we got AJ Francis and Casey Navarro economy class. But I am telling you right now, that motherfucker, that motherfucker back there is not. And they're taking on the rascals. In one word, would I use dope? Nope. This was very obvious that we were going to get this match based on the Call Your Shot gauntlet. So when I was previewing BFG, 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 I had said there's always one storyline that goes into the gauntlet, so you know who's going to win. And then they usually create one storyline, one separate storyline out of the gauntlet, and that was it. It was a uh, First class and the Rascals, Trey Miguel and the number one contender division championship, Zachary Wentz. So he's getting the same love that Laredo Kid gets for the X division championship because this guy is clearly never going to wrestle for that belt again because they used him to get the title on NXT. So we're going to do a double sound drop for Zachary Wentz and one of their opponents, Josh Alexander. I don't want to play with you anymore. Um, even though it's Josh's sound drop, we're, we're, we're going to give that to Zachary once this time too. So this match was fine. You know, I, I keep saying that I'm just not really into this version of first class and they, they win, they ended up cheating and winning and gosh, oh man, Tom Hannafin. I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to talk about Tom. At one point he said, shut up, you nerd to, to Matthew Ray while I'm like, talk about calling it the pot, calling the kettle black. Anyway, 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 no Tom Hannafin. Anyway, there's only one heel tag team in this company. I guess Sinner and Sane as well, but they need TNA plus appoint, uh, opponents for the Hardys. So here we go. Economy class, they'll be taking them on. I'm sure they're going to take them on at whatever the next TNA plus show is. And um, and then they'll move on to maybe the Rascals or, or, or something like that. I, I mean, the Hardys move on to the Rascals. So this was fine, but first class, a.k.a. economy class, gets the win. Then they uh, promote Hills Have Eyes 3. I didn't know there was a 1 and 2. I noticed during this match that the yellow filters back a little bit after Bound for Glory looked so good. Um, I I noticed because 
Trey Miguel looked jaundice, like he had, like he his skin was yellow. Anyway, so um, after that we had Josh Alexander. I don't want to play with you anymore. With mystery tag team partners, folks. There are a lot of things that TNA does very well. There's a lot of things that TNA does better than most companies. They have their strong points. Nobody, nobody does the mystery opponent, mystery partner thing worse than TNA. Nobody. Every single time they do. Okay, that's strong every single time. 90. I'm, 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 I'm going to say 90 here. 90% of the time that it is a open challenge, mystery opponent, mystery partner, it is a letdown. Now, Jordan Grace did a couple things with her challenges, even though she had a couple of jabrones from NXT. But nobody drops the ball worse than TNA. We are at a point right now in, in wrestling where when you say, I have mystery partners, you better surprise the shit out of us. It, it better be a debut. That's how fans look at this stuff. And of course, fans on Twitter, and they're, they're come up with their fantasy book in the hell out of this. Josh Alexander is, you know, uh, the, the Motor Sim Machine Guns fresh off their WWE title win. They're in Detroit. It's, it's going to be the guns. They're going to come wrestle as heels with Josh Alexander. People are fantasy booking the hell out of this. And it is, it's not, it's, it's the good hand jobs. Hey, for another 60, I'll jerk you off in the parking garage. And they got a good act. You know, you know what I'm saying? But like, just, just say it's the good hands. Make the, they, they made, they actually put a graphic out with the silhouettes. Like, mystery partners and, and there wasn't even a, a segment where he went and had to find partners he just showed up with these guys and of course the people in attendance don't even know their surprise partner so he comes out and he said that kid icarus and the wizard walt williams were held up in customs which is a real thing and um they made a little bit of a storyline out of this and he, t- he told the good hands you do good here boys you know, more of this in for you. I don't know what the hell he said. I don't really care. His opponents, Eric Young. Like those like those times where they're like the rah rah speeches and like getting everybody up. Cause like nobody really get motivated off that stuff anyway. But... Jonathan Gresham. Inky the octopus. Steve Macklin. Or the land of the free. Steve Macklin had new music, loved it. He he has the music of a star now. Masha Slamovich had new music as well. I didn't bring that up earlier. I did not like the whistle thing at the beginning of hers. Now she has music that of a star. So we're we're stepping step stepping our game up. There's a couple wrestlers they need to change entrances on. Leon Slater. Um, there's there's some guys who still have real generic stock mp3s as their their themes they need to revamp some of them a little bit and this this six-man tag match was fine josh alexander left them behind at one point and he's kind of feuding with both people gresham and macklin and i guess eric young too so he's kind of feuding with all three uh but he left them behind and then macklin gets the win or the, his team gets the win, but Macklin ultimately gets the pin, and and they're starting to push him as a a badass baby face, and I think it's working. I don't think they're ever going to actually even be able to go back to being a, a heel with Steve Macklin. I think what they're doing with him is is excellent. And then they show from the call your shot gauntlet, AJ Francis eliminating uh, Trent. All have a number seven, and then it shows Trent sitting sitting backstage, like. Bound for Glory wasn't a week ago. Trent Seven needs a sound drop, doesn't he? Let's give it to him. I don't want lunch. I want breakfast. Clearly, I wasn't talking to you, big titties. You cherub-looking motherfucker. You know, oh, here it comes, Tom Hannafin. I was hope I was glad that ba- since Bound for Glory was over, because I said this during my review. This motherfucker, every five uh, five seconds. Bound for glory. I, I, I thought, okay, bound for glory is over. I don't have to hear this anymore. And um, 
right back this episode. Every time he name dropped it, bound. Could you imagine back in the day, Vince McMahon, if he was just calling an episode of Wrestling Superstars, and every time he's just like, Wrestle Mania, just every every like five seconds throughout the episode. Okay, that that's that's it for Tom. But Trent, I'll have a number seven. is is very uh very upset because he got dumped ceremoniously in the Call Your Shot gauntlet, and then. The best actor in the history of TNA walks up, Cheeseball Mike Bailey. Cheese. Yeah. Didn't we lock you in the dumpster one time? I got out. They're having a conversation. He's all, it's all about in, what's in here that counts, pointing at his heart. Like, you're a winner in my eyes, Trent number seven. The system walks up here. This was clearly filmed at Bound for Glory. That's why it looks like Trent, I'll have a number seven, just finished wrestling. And Trent was completely off screen at this point. The system walks up. And maybe one of the unfunniest segments or moments since I've been covering TNA was, was Mike Bailey saying, oh, look, it's the NWO from Timu. He looks into the camera, delivers it. And I know Card Cody Diener isn't on this episode, but we're going to... Give the Cody Diener fart in church sound drop. I pray that the blessing of Almighty God may rest upon your counsels. I mean, oh my God. This is, I, I've said this many, 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 many times. If you are not funny, don't try to be funny. You cannot be funny. Unfunny people cannot be funny. They don't know the delivery they don't know the, the 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 cadence, the tone, the pace. I mean, nothing. This was embarrassing to watch. I thank God it only lasted about two seconds, but I was like, I, I was pretty embarrassed. With oh, what a kidding cow! And Moose challenges him, and they're going to wrestle. And Mike Bailey is going to put the X Division Championship on the line. I would imagine Moose is going to win this thing. And Mike Bailey says. It's not about weight limits. It's no limits. It's about no limits, whatever. I got a question. I got a question. What does that phrase actually mean? Because Tom Hannafin says it when two guys are 180 pounds are wrestling in the ring. So is no limits what they do in the ring? Or is it the weight, uh, how much they the wrestlers weigh? Is it the weight class or, or the moves? Or is it both? Okay, let's move on from that. So I think Moose is going to win next week, though. I, I, I believe Mike Bailey is wrapping up with TNA. So I'm pretty sure Moose is going to win, and the Moose gimmick, the system gimmick, works as long as someone's got a, a championship in there. And if Moose is the X Division champion, I mean, the Tom Hannafin is going to lose his shit with the with the uh, not about weight limits, it's no oh, limits. What a kidding cow. After this, after that um, new little set, because we got we got um, earlier than that, we saw Vikingo versus Mike Bailey. I, I don't know why. I guess they were trying to kill time. I don't know. I'm sure that the Chris Bay thing threw things off, so they felt need to uh, kick uh, to kill a little bit of time. After this, we got the personal concierge coming out. That's my dad. But don't worry, he's cool. Really? <laughs> he doesn't look cool. Heather by elegance. He has an erection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all her fault. And in singles competition, Ash by elegance. Come on, Teddy. Come on, Teddy. Okay, I got to explain that sound drop real quick. I had said um, after Slammiversary that we were going to get a nipple slip at some point with Ash because of her her tops. Like she spent half the match of Bound for Glory trying to tuck him back in, and I was like, "We're we're gonna see Titty at some point." So, uh, this <laughs> the sound drop is from Dave Chappelle, and this is, I mean, two thousand five, two thousand six, something like that. Probably earlier than that. There was a, a sketch on his show where he was in a car, and they were going really, really fast, and a girl was next to him, and they were kind of like bouncing up and down, and then um, like her titty popped out. So, when he was explaining it, he was saying. I feel guilty because I feel like I made it happen with my eyes. I was just looking there saying, Come on, Teddy. Come on, Teddy. 
so yeah that's um that's the the history between between behind Aspiel against the sound drop man you 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 people don't understand how much I hate that I stumble over my words a lot as experienced as I am of a podcaster, I stumble over my words a lot. You guys already know that. But I listen to a guy like the personal concierge, and this dude just rattles shit off, and he doesn't he doesn't skip a beat. I was like, man, I wish I had that. Because the minute I get thrown off, like right now I'm like super hot in my here where I'm recording, and it's like I'm all I'm all hot, so it just throws me off. But yeah, this dude just just rattles shit off. Asked by Elegance's opponent is Danny Luna. Tell me right now that I'm just a job. Tell me to my face. You're just a job. This was not good. Um, Outside of the matches with Jordan Grace, Ash's matches are just not good. There's just always bad comedy involved, and, and they're just not, they're just not great. I did like uh the personal concierge announcers from the go- gorgeous city of Cleveland. <laughs> got a got a good reaction from the people of Detroit. Cleveland gets a bad rap. Like BQ will go to Cleveland. BQ will hang out in Cleveland. You know what I'm saying? Um but they get they get a a pretty bad rap. So so Ash was dressed like a witch. And Tom Hannafin here I go with Tom again. Um at this point he asked us he asked us to go back and watch the match on TNA plus of Zaya Brookside and Zinley Reese versus Ash and Heather by Elegance. I implore you to not watch that match again if you've seen it once before. Like life is very short. We could die tomorrow. Do not waste precious seconds of your life, precious minutes of your life going back to like logging on to TNA Plus and watching that match for a second time. I I beg you not to do that. I mean, good plug for TNA Plus, but I I absolutely beg you not to do that. So, yo, so I got to rewind. Explosion had a match the other day. Speaking of Zaya Brookside, she teamed up with Brindley Reese. I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell you. Right, let me tell you <laughs> we don't care. Versus Kendall Gray. I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell you. Right, let me tell you. <laughs> we don't care. And Carly Wright. I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell you. Right, let me tell you. <laughs> we don't care. Yeah, that's that. That had to be a tough one right there. There was actually a match on Explosion coming up. Uh, Zia Brookside wrestling against um, God. What the hell's her name? She's she's a uh, she's in NWA. Miss a Kate. I couldn't think what her her name was, but they have a match on Explosion coming up. So I'm actually going to check that out. Because I guess she's not, NWA has a lot of people signed under exclusive deals. I guess she's not one of them. They they have more like exclusive contracts, I think, than TNA does. Um, but I guess she's not one of them. I think she's pretty good. I, I think she's more of like an NWA talent than a knockout. And I think she's done, she's been a jobber on AEW before, but um, I'm actually kind of interested to check that out. Anyway, Ash by Elegance wins this match, and that's how we're going to get the future knockouts tag team champions hash and hash I'm telling you, man, I just can't just spit these words out. Like the personal concierge future knockouts, tag team champions, Ash and Heather by elegance. That's how we're going to get them versus spitfire. It'll probably happen on TNA plus, and then they'll probably win. So spitfire, they can enjoy that rain for a couple more weeks. And then we'll get um, new tag team champions who will have no opponents. And the match wins, by the way. I mean, the match ends, by the way, with Heather hitting her on the back of the, on the Danny Luna on the back with a broom. And then Danny Luna scoots into position for the rarefied air. At one point, there was a, an eye rake from Ash to Danny Luna. And then Tom Hannafin sells it like it is the fucking top rope DDT. Who the hell is Sada Baby? This guy was ringside. I'm guessing he's a hip hop artist. I'm a hip hop guy, don't get me wrong. But anything after like 2016, if, if you're like a new artist after that time, I probably have no idea who you are. 
and no interest in your music whatsoever. So I'm guessing he's a, a local talent out of Detroit there, but I have personally never, uh, never heard his stuff. So after we finish that match and we listen to Tom's fake outrage, we get Yaling, Jesus Christ, Yaling Lee. And whether Bill Goldberg, let me tell you something about Bill Goldberg. I'm going to struggle with that name. It just does not come off naturally for me. I'm going to struggle with that one for a little bit. Shay takes on Maggie Moore. Maggie Moore is pretty imposing. She is 5'11". Um, she's, she's the latest person that the TNA fans are going to get on Twitter and say, sign Maggie Moore. But she's also doing the next set of tapings, I believe. I don't know if it's Explosion. I don't know if they're looking at her. She doesn't look like a TV talent to me. But, you know, I thought she looked okay. The match didn't go terribly long. Xia Li um, ultimately wins the match, wins it pretty quickly. And then after that, we got the returning Savannah Evans. That's a huge bitch. And I had been telling you guys that she they were repackaging her, that she was going to be back soon. So we'll see what they um we'll see what they do. We'll see if, you know, she's only ever been a bodyguard. You know, for she did for who Tasha Steeles and for Giselle Shaw. So I don't think there was anyone else in there, but she's just always been a bodyguard. And there's there's challenges on booking someone of that size. The natural thing is to make them a bodyguard. Like it's just very easy to fall into that role. So we'll see. They've been um, they've been working on her character. So we'll see what she which what she brings. And then Tom Hannafin says, "I've been told Frankie Kazarian is gonna come to ringside." While well, it shows a Frankie Kazarian video package that was obviously put together. Speaking of video package, we got one from Mike Santana. That's nasty. Another very very good one. So we know that he's well on his way to wrestling for the world title at some point. I, I'm pretty sure that Joe Hendry is in his spot. But Mike eventually is going to get there. He will be the champion at one point. The problem is, I think TNA promises too many people world title runs. Because they bring Nick Nemeth on. And trust me, the conversation was like, dude, you will win the title by Bound for Glory. And you get the organic growth of Joe Hendry. You end up bringing... Mike Santana in around the same time. And it's like, fuck, we need these guys to be champion, but we promised Nick Nemeth and they probably promised Mike Santana as well. But then you got to get the Joe Hendry run in there. And it makes you wonder when Joe Hendry wins it, how long that title reign is going to be. You think they're going to make Mike Santana wait the majority of 2025 to be champion? So that's going to be interesting to see how, how that happens. He said that he beat every member of the system one by one. Like I don't remember. I actually don't remember that. I know he beat uh, Dango. I don't remember him wrestling Eddie Edwards or Brian Myers. He had a match with Brian Myers. Yeah, that's right. Because Tom Hannafin said, first time ever." Could you imagine like Tom Hannafin in the bedroom? He'd be like, "Hey, baby, this was my first time ever." Anal. Oh, and I can't count. But he said it was a first time ever matchup, but there was no match. All he did was come out and whoop and like get himself disqualified. It was it was a no contest. So he never beat Brian Myers. I don't recall him beating Eddie Edwards. I'm sure he did at some point, but when he says I, I came out and beat him one by one, I, I don't I don't like fully recall that. And then we've got it was what the main event. Main event was Joe Hendry and Nick Nemeth versus the system. And this was Eddie Edwards. All right, son, I'm going to need those two hams back. I don't have any hams. Lift up your shirt, son. And Johnny Dango Curtis. These are spirit fingers. And these are gold. It was actually kind of refreshing to watch the system in this form. You know, when, when years ago, when I was kind of like the early days of AEW, when I was enjoying it, they had a lot of stables. And they would switch up the partners within the stable. So like the stable I really liked at the time was a dark order, which they suck now, but I used to like the dark order, but they would have one match where or one 
you know, one week where it's, you know, Allen Angels with with 10, and then the next week it's Allen Angels with Cole Cabana, and then it's Uno with, uh, you know, whoever, like John Silver. Like, they would switch it up, and it, it kind of kept things very, very fresh. I wish they would do that with the system a little bit more because it's either you're wrestling Dango and Moose or Eddie Edwards and Brian Meyer. So to switch it up a little bit, I think, kind of freshens things up. And this was a fine main event. It was a it was a WWE style main event tag team match that you know can they coexist? And they can't. <laughs> so that's how we're we're getting heat here. Is that uh because Joe Hendry accidentally hit Nick Nemeth and um Nick Nemeth actually got pinned here, which was shocking. So at first, Tom Hannafin tried to say this is the first time he's ever been pinned. And then he said in six months, like he corrected himself. And I made a comment, too, that I said, I don't think Nick Nemeth is going to lose in TNA. I forgot he lost to Moose. But he didn't lose cleanly to Moose. His shoulder was up. So I still kind of stand by what I said. I don't I don't think he's going to take a clean loss to someone in TNA. But yeah, Nick Nemeth actually took the pin here wasn't clean to go back to what i just said but he takes the pin he takes the pin and the system wins so the system's got a little momentum again they do a pretty good job with they're the anti honor no more because honor no more just lost every week the system does lose but then they you know they find a way to get some momentum back and i think that's going to happen with moose as well getting the x division championship so um nick nemeth one week ago told joe hendry he respected him and now he's they're in a blood feud so after this, they actually did a social media angle. I, I don't know if they did a good job bouncing people from one platform to another the way they did it, but I know that there was a social media ang- angle with uh, Tommy Dreamer. Once once I saw Tommy Dreamer in the image, I was like, I don't really need to click this. But it looks like they're going to get some heat for this next feud. Frankie Kazarian is obviously going to be very, very involved in what's going on. And I think Frankie Kazarian's involvement is what's going to, in one way or another, get the title off Nick Nemeth because, I I mean, I really don't feel he's going to take a clean loss to anybody. This isn't Trinity who's like, I'm going to beat everyone, and then Jordan, I put Jordan over on the way out. I don't think Nick Nemeth putting anyone over on the the way out. That's just my personal opinion, but I, I guess we will see. That is going to do it for me for this week, for this Halloween. It wasn't really a Halloween-themed episode. The graphics were a little Halloween-y, um, but that was about it. So decent enough episode. It wasn't awful, but it was. if you didn't see it, there's not a whole lot to go out of your way and, and watch. So that'll do it for me, folks, this week. I'm your boy, BQ. We'll talk again soon. Peace.